tonight. I'm sure you could have found something better to do. Oh, no, no, this is one of my favorite Monday night things. Um, as long as you're here, business. I'll be here tonight. Okay. <laughs> First order of business is to call the meeting to order, please. Is it not working? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. To call the meeting to order. Second is to announce that we have an executive session immediately prior to this board meeting this evening to discuss real estate. One other announcement I want to make, and I hope it doesn't come as a surprise. I'm hard of hearing. I, I wear hearing aids, and it became painfully obvious to me last meeting that I struggled to hear folks in the audience. I was constantly asking Mike, Vernon, or, or David. So bear with me. The next meeting and then thereafter, we're going to locate a microphone this in the center, and anybody wishing to address is going to have to use the microphone. And I apologize for that inconvenience. I just. Can't we use the ones that are there now? We could start Train, tonight. Start training us up. Um, I just wanted to give a, a, week's no, or a couple weeks notice to be fair, because not everybody likes to stand up and talk in a while. <coughs> first order of business is to approve the minutes of the September 5th meeting. I move to approve the minutes from September 5th, 2017 estimated. Second. Any comments from the audience? Seeing that, I'll put the all those in favor? Aye. The next item is the police reports. We have Sergeant Russell with us tonight. He gets to use the microphone. Mm -hmm. Use the microphone. All right. Uh, during the month of August, the West Vincent Township Police Department responded to 190 calls for service, including the following. The arrest of a 19-year-old male from Chester Springs for possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia in the unit block of Adelphi Lane. Also the arrest of a 40-year-old male from Reading for DUI in the 1100 block of Potts Town Pike. That's it. Any questions? Thank you. The next item is approval of the bills list. This week's bills list is... <coughs> The township bills list is $55,522.03. The reimbursable bills list is $18,761.07. And the subdivision utility plan bills list is $16,310.66. Combined all three bills list total $90,593.76. I move that the board approve the bills list day September 18, 2017 at the total amount of $90,593.76. I'll second that. Any questions from the Sarah? Um, the Cedarville Engineering on page one shows costs for the zoning hearing board meeting, so it's the engineer coming to testify. Is that something that could be reimbursable? No. No. I didn't hear that. She's asking if the Cedarville Engineering um, person coming to the zoning hearing board to be reimbursable. There, there that was the question. Was our township. Judge, you went away. That was the, you and I had talked about that two weeks ago. And that came up at the last meeting. Um, to, to answer Sarah's particular question, it's not reimbursable because we're litigation. That's not a pass through cost. Only okay. plan review is a pass through but, cost. But some of the zoning hearing board costs um, might be picked up by the mm, claimant if. It's not found to be a valid complaint? No? No. Okay, so the fact that this one's going on and on and on is just keeping costing us a lot. Yes. Okay, I, thank you. Any other questions? All right. There's a statement down here for Stevenson Equipment Incorporated, road mower tractor blades, $1168.07. Is that a boom mower? What was that? the vendor's name? Stevenson. Tell me, do you know anything about that? Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, Art, I don't know. Uh, I didn't pull this out and look at it that closely. If you want to get an answer tomorrow. All right, that'll be fine. Thank you. Any other questions? Brian. 
Um, we've got one here for Apex Computer Corporation, and it says replace server battery, computer maintenance, we pay $285 for it. Computers only have little tiny coin cell or thumb cell batteries that are about the size of a quarter. We pay $285 for it? It says server. It's a server. Tammy, can you help us here? I do know that the bill was invoiced for three hours of time. There was trouble troubleshooting involved in the same battery replacement. And it's server, not and computer. And it's server, it's not, the, not a computer. The, there's other charges. If you, if, you, if you want us to break down what part was the battery, I can do that, but I can't do it tonight. I'd like to go and know what uh, battery they replaced. And a server is a computer. Um, the next question I've got is, this kind of follows up into what uh, Sarah said. On the uh, Cedarville Engineering, we had, uh, there's a thing there, again, we, it showed up last meeting, we talked about it for approximately $2,000 for the uh, zoning hearing attendance. And we asked, you know, what does a contract say about that? You know, who has read what it says? Actually, the question was, did the, the contract allow for this to be reimbursed? Um, or, I forget what it was, but why are we paying Cedarville out of that? They should pay for their own thing. Joe, that's what we actually talked about. Cedarville is my expert witness in the defense of the decision the township has made. Um, when it came up last month, Cedarville said, well, if you're not going to pay us, we're not going to go to here. So then I'm stuck with a case with no witness. So if you have an expert witness, you pay the expert witness to come and testify. Okay, we pay them when they come to testify. And in preparation, you know, they have all the time involved in the whole process. So we paid them to make a decision, and now when we're asking them to defend their decision, we're paying them to develop that their defense. Am I understanding that right? No, they're not the defendant. The township's the defendant. So they're not defending their decision. They're helping the township defend the decision. It's the position of zoning officer that made the decision. It doesn't matter whether it's someone in-house or someone not in the direct employment. It doesn't matter whether it's a 1099 employee or a W-2 employee. It, it's still the process of the zoning officer making a decision and then the township defending that decision. I mean, okay. otherwise, every time the township manager made a decision that may have been wrong, I guess you went to Dr. Pay or I mean, it's, it's ludicrous to, to do what I want. Well, in my opinion, in my experience, when it's a direct employee versus a contractor employee, there's a big difference there, okay? Going further, I believe the last two meetings, uh, at least one of the Cedarville people has been there. Were they there on your request, and you're being the, the firm that, that represents us? They're there on behalf of the township to try and defend a claim from made from the claimant. Um, they're there helping in the defense. They're there in the capacity as giving testimony, giving advice, listening to the testimony to help prepare cross-examination. They're, they're a very vital component of all this. Okay. Um, There's two items from your firm. There's a land trust subdivision appeal, and then there's also a zoning appeal on uh, El Brandolini. The first one's approximately $800, the next one is around $5,000. Um, I did a bit of investigation on this. And I called the Prothonotary's office, and apparently we're party to four civil suits uh, down in Westchester. Um, and this is this question is only to the extent of what's visible from reviewing the um, the public files in the Prothonotary. And if I mangled that pronunciation, I apologize. Uh, office. 
What do the suits concern? The National Land Trust got four subdivisions approved, and Brandolini, one of the neighbors, has taken an appeal of every one of those subdivisions. So it's, uh, we're, we're defending it like any other land development approval. The National Land Trust is also defending it because they have an obvious interest in the outcome. And uh, at this point in time, we have recently filed two joint motions to dismiss the appeals. And we're waiting for those motions to be ruled on. Okay, so this is that the Brandolinis are suing the township and natural lands about their about the subdivision that natural lands had done. Is that correct? They're not suing the National Lands Trust, they're suing the township for giving approval to the National Lands Trust. The National it, Lands Trust wasn't a party at that time. Now they are a party because they're intervening. They're asking to be a party by intervening. Okay. But this comes down to, still comes down to, a suit concerning the natural lands properties and not the Brandolini's properties. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And down in um, utility bills, there's an item for frames, power equipment, and mulch. And it says, replace carburetor, oil filter, spark plugs. And I got a reply back from Tammy that it was done on a pump. And I'm still trying to figure out how a pump has a carburetor, oil filter, and spark plugs. You know, who had it done? You know, what did they ask to have done? When the bill came in, who checked that what we asked to have done was done? Can you answer that? I can't answer that. Is this the correct description Description that was on the invoice? Um, I believe that she doesn't do the invoice. Yeah, I know. I did check, though, after Brian asked me, and that's what That's what they says. put down. Mm -hmm. Brian, do you have any thoughts on that? Does that make sense? Could be your generator service. Maybe generator and pump. Because because when you have the generator run the water system, right? Okay. That would make more sense. Brian, without a manager checking that, obviously the two of us don't know. But I can give you an answer tomorrow. If yeah, I appreciate, it. I also thought about it being the the generator, the emergency generator down there, and I believe we have a bunch of service contracts that they do cycling through. They cycle through over a long period of time. Some other firm doing that and not frames. This was a new one. And, you know, saying it's a pump, just like, what? John, if you can get back to me on that, I'd appreciate it. I will do it. Um, that's it. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Sarah had her hand up a half hour ago. Yeah, I think he covered most of them. Last two weeks ago, you approved something that Brian neglected to ask about, and that was a bill from a, a Thurkoff, Ed Thurkoff, about the EAC tree ordinance, and showed up in, in discussion at the EAC meeting saying, what was this about? And so they were going to check and see if that was in the wrong column, or if it shouldn't have been billed, or it was the right thing. Okay, so we had asked for his help in doing that. Okay, thank you very much. George. Brian, did Brian want to finish? I call on George. Okay. Uh, going back to what Brian mentioned about the zoning appeal, are those fees recoverable if it's ruled in our favor? No, they are not. Mm -hmm. Brian, you had another question? This goes with what Sarah was saying. I was at that EAC meeting with Sarah, and there were, I'm going to say there was some... It was not a date. It was not a date. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. I attended the same meeting with Sarah at the EAC. And there was some, I'm going to say, confusion about why the bill occurred. And in some ways, you know, there's almost kind of a pattern 
and that you know we had frames, and we don't know why the bill came in. Somebody in. knows. What's that again? Somebody knows, just not to tell us something. Let me finish. And maybe somebody knows why the, uh, I think his name is Therkoff, submitted the bill. But there doesn't seem to be a lot of connection between those two. You know, we, it almost seems that we could have fraudulent bills come in, and there's not a process that seems to be checking up, okay, we requested this, we got it, and we're paying the bill for it. I see your point. And prior to the hiring of America, Mike David and I would either take turns or sometimes there were two or three two of us sitting there going through each invoice and double checking things. Since we've had Erica, we haven't had the need to do that. But as you're aware, she's been out for a couple weeks, so I think right or wrong, that's the hiccup for most of it anyway. Yes. So we should start doing it. So it's Erica's fault. That's as plain as I can tell you. Or it sounds like either you guys forgot to go back to your old routine since Eric isn't here. Exactly. Sorry. I'm going to say it loudly, just, I think you can trust that Danielle is doing due diligence most of the time with them. And Tammy knew that that bill was legit, so I think you really have some basic coverage in place, in case you wondered. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about the bills list? Going once. All those in favor of approval of the bill list? Aye. Next up we have a letter to the Chief Manager from um, Don Rosano thanking the Police Department for their help in that uh, carriage ride during the Labor Day weekend uh, uh, carriage ride for the horse show. Next, we have a letter from the PA department, or DEP, with um, the 2014 recycling grant information. Yeah, they're really, really on the wall. Oh, really the they're almost as efficient as we are. Well, thanks. Oh. Uh, have you bothered to read this? This is a $5,000 grant, or, or $442. Um, this grant reflects the 491 tons of residential and commercial materials recycled by your citizens and businesses in the calendar year 2014. Uh, we calculated the 15% residual on all residential tonnages for A.J. Blazinski per hall information. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, we've received this like three years in a row. Every year we get a little bit. This is a nice bit. This is yeah, about $1,000. It's a nice bit. It's John, from what you said there, that we're only recycling 15% of our total trash? That's not what he said. What's that again? That's the total. There's, there's a sentence that that's not what he said. It's, what I'm reading, it says, we calculated 15% residual on all residential tonnages for A.J. Blazinski per hall or information. I don't know what that really That's means. a standard terminology they use in the recycling. So 15% residue has nothing to do with the amount of, of recycling. It's just considered residue. I don't know, it's like a fine. Because you don't have everything separated, they put it all together. The, the important takeaway on this, Brian, is performance grant in the amount of $5,442. Okay, good yes, right. guys. That's good. And I know it's been reported before. I can't remember whether that's better or worse better. than the last time. That's better. Valid. It is better. And I know I've asked about this before, is that Act 101 or whichever act that talked about recycling the target was 20%, and I'm still really curious whether is, you know, West Vincent Township be meeting 20%? Are we exceeding it? Are we overachievers? You know, where do we stand? Where is, is there any grading on that? And I've never, you know, heard responses, and that's not necessarily pointed at, at Tammy or anybody else. Could we ask DEP, uh, is this number available to us that we can see how we're doing? 
Do you think they separate by township? Yes. Okay. I don't know how they would do that without cheese. I have no idea. Yes, Brian. Going back to the um, trash task force, the various haulers, they they have a route, they weigh the truck when it comes through, when they go through that route, and then they apportion it to the various townships that they go through. It's a reasonable way to do it. There's no other way to get it finer than that. They do the same thing with the recycling. So you've got a tonnage of recycling per township, and you've got a tonnage of trash per township. And between the two, <coughs> the map, you get percentages. Thank you, Sarah. I believe the 15% residual is they take the weight of recycled materials collected and then they said, by the time we were done sorting it, 15% didn't really qualify. And so that's what Tammy is saying is an industry standard to say, that's the stuff that we couldn't recycle. So we're only getting paid on the good stuff. Yes, Jack. What is the grant money used for? I think whatever we want. So it doesn't have anything to do with well, trash? It's not. No, we can use it for a general fund. It's general fund. General fund. Pay for the seven. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? And we'll move on. What do we have here? This is um, the email request to postpone the stop sign and gate discussion. <laughs> what was the stop sign? Chester Springs Road. Oh, okay. <coughs> we don't have to take it. We, we received a request from Jim Helm and to postpone it for until the next meeting. 30 so days or second. until Eric it returns. Whichever so is that's, So it's postponed until further notice, at least two weeks, maybe four weeks. But, well, I could have sent you an email that said, how about we take care of it tonight and be done? So. Because I don't think that would be right. People want to be heard. They want to make sure that we're making the right decision. I get that. So why would we want to? So why does Erica have to be here for it? Because she is an integral part of the team, and we think it would be best if she was Well, actually, Jim thinks it would be best. And yeah. Jim thinks it would be best. Jim and John think it would be best, Mike. Apparently, they put a lot more stock in Erica when she's around than, than Mike and I and David. I don't think but we got Joe tonight. John. Yes. Um, uh, there are more than people than just John and, and Jim who agree with that. And I think there are about seven of us in attendance on the part of just South just has been through, which accounts for quite a bit of this current attendance and tonight's meeting. So there's more than just two people. I would like to further <coughs> that theme and ask that the minutes be amended from August 21st. 2017. It currently reads a Gloria Shantz from 2415 South Chester Springs Road handed the board a petition signed by several people who desire to have the road remain closed. I would like the minutes uh, amended to reflect the accurate number of petitioners, which is 200 plus. Can we do that? And that's a substantial I have no objection to it at all. Several. The minutes are purely your discretion. So we can amend them. If you want. Okay. But you can just report it. You can report it. How about reporting it today? I'd just like an accurate reflection on the amount of people that support us, which follows Sarah's comments. So it's not just a few, it's substantial. Do you want that? With your meeting? permission, we're going to encapsulate what you just said in tonight's meeting, okay? okay. That way we don't have to go backwards. Thank you. I, Hold on. She's trying to get it right. Okay. I, Just, I also have a treatise here to, to discuss you, a lot. I'm having a treatise, a, you know, a document here that I um, prepared to discuss and explain what I see happening with Chester Street Road. And I will wait till the agenda is over. I just want to let you know that I would like to speak for a few minutes. 
after the meeting. P no. Public comment. Well, no, uh, right after the final um, agenda. Because sure. we're not on the agenda. We always have a segment called uh, non agenda items for the public to right. speak. Sarah. My curiosity is can you, not talking about it, stop PennDOT from acting? I think we have no. You have, we've, you've discussed previously that you have no influence over PENDA. So. But I don't think PENDA's going to do anything without our knowledge in this case. Yeah, the point is well taken. Should we reach out to them? Yeah. Tammy. Um, Tammy's going to call. You want to pick a date where you are going to talk about it? Just say that'll be the date? Mike, I'd rather have you, if you wouldn't mind, pick up the phone and call him Penn Up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got five phone yeah. calls already. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Yeah, but you, I'll be on hold for a while. I was going to ask David, but he was too smart to be here. <laughs> yeah, yes, Jennifer. How does this all relate to the board-approved decision on April 7th for a turnout? Say that again, please. I, I'm, How does all these discussions and um, procedures with PennDOT relate to the board-approved decision for a turnaround on April 7th? I don't understand the question. You mean the paving of it or something? Correct. Right, the paving of the turnaround. And what's so the question? I don't know. Decision. Well, what's, what, what's going on with the paving of the turnaround? Eric, who is doing that. Brian, do you have any insight on that? Is a road crew doing that? No, the road crew, the road crew does not have the capability no. equipment to do it. So we have to, and right now, the, we're at the end of the paving season for getting a price that would be affordable. Tammy, can you check with Mark Hughes on that? But the, um, can you call Tammy in the morning? We were waiting for the dedication <clears throat> to do the turnaround. The letter, but that would be in conflict, conflict with the PennDOT no. procedures. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it would. What, what I suggest, and I don't want to speak on behalf of the board, why don't you just pick a date, say the second meeting next month, and say that's when you talk about the date and all of the other issues. Um, but because this, something has to happen here. Every meeting you're talking about it, and everyone's going different directions. I, I think you've got to have a meeting. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be fourth right in the discussions when you commit to a turnaround. And then be here today is uh, confusing at the least. I, I don't know They're what that in means. They're in complete conflict with each other. Well, would you like us to make a decision tonight, or would you like us to bear, bear with me for a second, Jennifer? Or would you like us, what we're trying to do is do it the right way. Correct. And, that, so, that so we, and then you're going to have to bear with us, and we'll pick a date, like Joe said, the second meeting in October. Okay? Whether Eric is back or not, that's, we'll, we'll begin. It might be more than one meeting. Who knows? This what process we has gone on for two plus years. So for our last meeting to give us two weeks was pretty insulting. Um, given that you committed on April 7th an opposite commitment. I, I so, would disagree with you vehemently. And we agreed because a resident, a neighbor of yours requested it. We were trying to be. We were in a meeting with you. It wasn't just a neighbor. No, I'm talking about the request to move this from tonight for two weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks. Oh, four weeks. No, we're, we're two meetings. We're talking about two different things, but that's okay. Right. All right. I agree with doing the, the October. Way, the correct way. Any other questions? Where are we? Number six. This is from an extension from the Canadian Land Development Plan. A request for an extension. Yes. I move to grant the extension for the Canadian Land Development Plan until December 31st, 2017. I second the motion. Joe, is there a number of, is there a limit to how many extensions one group can get? <laughs> there's, uh, there's no limit. The, the law just says you have to be reasonable. Um, so there's, been, no, there's no limit to it, but my suggestion is if you're inclined not to continue 
to grant those extensions, you let them know now so that they know in the next 90 days they have to wrap this thing up. I've been on the board for four years. This has been going on for four years. I have no idea what they're going to consider. Well, then why don't we send them a letter saying we've granted your extension request, but we're, we will not be granting any in the future? Is there any reason why we should stop granting the extensions? I mean, I'm guessing they're, they, they're not ready to develop. Do you, know why they're they're getting, do you know why they're getting extensions, Brian? Is there a reason well, or just to stay yes. in the old? I spoke with their engineer this afternoon. And he's working on revising the plans per our last letter. And we'll be anticipate submitting back to them in the next two weeks. So they're actively working yes. on <laughs> This is the project where they have five lots, but they never were properly recorded. They're trying to make their way through the county to figure out how to get the five lots reestablished with the county. Well, I'd rather not interfere with what they're trying to accomplish. Then. Yes, so yes, they have not stopped work. It's been slow, but they have not stopped. Okay. So we won't send that letter just yet. Okay. January we'll consider. <laughs> and there were issues that if you were to tell them that you weren't going to be considering to extend it, you might be giving them a deemed approval. And one of the issues was stormwater. So you wouldn't want to fall into that letter. trap. How about a letter for you, Dean? Um, did you vote on that? The great no, yeah. no. You seconded it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Brian? Sounds to me like one of the things is as long as they're working with the engineer and, and you know, we're, we're having interaction back and forth between them. I don't see any real reason not to go and give them the expense. I just said that same thing a yeah. few minutes ago. So. He's mansplaining he it to you. Yeah, he's mansplaining to you. Any other comments? Seeing that I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of granting right. the extension? Aye. Right. Next under old business is the snow and uh, ice removal bin. I move that we reject the bid for snow and ice removal since the contractor did not include the necessary documents to make the bid complete. I second that motion. Yeah. We're not going to have any snow this year. I was going to say, then that, what are we going to do? So, is it something they're going to do? Or? We're going to hire this firm after the bids have been rejected twice for <laughs> our, our, our hands are untied as far as bidding process and all that. So we're going to formalize an agreement with them. With the same company? The same company. It's just, it's easier that way. Brian. John, it sounds crosswise that you rejected it because they didn't have all the paperwork. And now you're saying we're going to hire them. Are they going to get the paperwork or whatever? The they paperwork was fine. It, was, it did, did not come with a bond payment. Bond. Okay. Okay, so are we we're doing an agreement without a bond? I don't believe they need a bond, or at least for the same amount. Oh, didn't we have that about three or four years yeah. ago? It went on and on and on about getting a bond and not giving work to somebody who didn't have a bond. Did I don't think it was a bond. I think it was workman's compensation insurance. It was bond. It was like, also workman's compensation insurance. So did I encapsulate yes. that? Yes. Just yes. Okay. So does the... Yes. Snow plow guy have workman's comp? Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Seeing none, a vote to remove the bid? No. Reject. Reject the bid. Reject the bid. Remove it. All those in favor? Aye. Just wanted to get the terminology right. The French Creek Road culvert, we're going to authorize an environmental study. <laughs> I, I, I like, move to authorize like, the environmental study on parcel 25-4-136. This is actually different. I sell so for, for in an amount of $800. No, I'm sorry, in an amount of $3,500. Like, I'll second could, that. Could have done it two years ago? No. This is... This is an adjoining property next to the property with the French Creek culvert that is closed. Is it okay if I elaborate a little bit, Brian? It's, sure. not gonna... it's a separate parcel. 
we need to encroach approximately 15 feet, if I got that right, on the easement, um, or a little beyond the easement, and the homeowners will not give us that. So is it, is it beyond the road right of way? Yes. yes. Okay. What they want to instead is give us the whole parcel. I know normally you'd be jumping for joy, but there's a little there's a little pond there that has us that gives us the heebie-jeebies. That's a technical term. And <laughs> yes. So um, we went back and forth, and we figured the quickest way is to do a quick study, phase one, on that pond, and if that comes out okay, we will take it and they'll give it to us and we'll be done. It'll be quicker that way than going through eminent domain or anything else for the easement, which as you might gather, not everybody's in favor of that. Okay. Anyway, so that's what that is. Yes, Brian. When did the culvert fail? When did, was it? Was when did it fail? Was it the year? closing date was March 1st of last year. 18 months. Okay. It probably failed well before that, but that's when it was discussed. That's, discussed. When, the road, discussed. that's when the road surface settled. Before. <laughs> it, was, it was obvious from the surface there was a problem. Um, I'm just hoping. I have two more years left. I just that's hope fine. that it's done before then. Anyway. Any other questions on that motion? Brian? Further to what you just said, it's kind of like Steve Meyer trying to get the Weatherstone Trail in. And it's been 10 years, and we may get part of it done this year. Maybe. We'll see. That's later. Any other questions? Yes, John. Is this an old ice pond that was there? Because you might just... I don't know. I don't know if you want to just, just fill it in. It's, it was it's, an ice pond filled by the stream, by the creek. So it's an artificial pond. It's not a... We're not sure. Ken you remember seeing it. I remember touring with Ken, and he had some questions about it. Um, we're not sure what it was, but the first thing you'd want to do is fill it. But th that'd be the last thing we want to do until we find out what is actually in there. So yeah. apparently, you can get into big data if you fill, start filling holes like that without yeah. the proper plans. Anyway. Any other questions? We have a motion, right? A second. Yeah. All those in favor? All right. All right. Next is the fellowship uh, trail, a change order. I move that the board authorize a change order for the fellowship chair on the upper Euclid parcel. A second in motion. Do you want to explain what this is? Uh, we were alerted that part of the trail can't be paved, so we need to do a change order to take out that section of the trail. And not pave it. It's the part that's on the land trust property? Correct. And is that because of the easement when it Correct. was? Correct. Well, the second easement, not the first one. The first one, uh, West Vincent Land Trust would have allowed us to pave it, but the with one Hankin. with Hankin, and then now with uh, French and Pickering, they will not allow the trail to be paved. So you have to move it across no, the road? No, we're just going to stop it paved, let the grass go, and then start the trail again. There's nothing we can do, and it will save us some money. Except the idea was a stroller friend. I understand that, but trail. it's out of our control. Who's we don't have the ability. Know. French and Pickford are the only person that would have the ability to change their easement or conservation easement, and it allows to do it. Jane, how big is the section, and have we appealed to them to allow? I think us it's 270 feet. 270 feet. Has anyone asked them if they make an exception in this order? They told us they weren't going to. Is that a correct pen? Well, the, the easement is actually the original easement. There wasn't a West Vincent land trust easement because they're the owner of the property. So the original easement has always been held by French and Pickering. And that's not true. There was one, the original was held by between Hank and, and West Vincent Land Trust. It was 2007. Okay, at that then yours came up three years later. So. Right. So the agreement between West Vincent and French and Pickering was that the trails had to be porous. So a solution to that might be porous paving. So you still are in compliance with the easement, but you get that stroller-friendly surface. Back so to there, the bricks. There is a way to do it. Back to the bricks Steve Meyer wanted us to have 
sell bricks to help pay for it. They start that campaign. Well, the bricks on the parks and rec. It was a parks and rec project. Suzanne, is that you? It is me. And Sarah, I don't think we can have bricks there because bricks wouldn't be suitable, I think, for what Pam is talking about. There is porous paving that you can do that's concrete where the grass can grow up through it. And that would make a surface that you could actually put a stroller on. So that would be an answer to that situation. Is that answer at the same cost as? Paved? I have no idea. I have no idea what the cost is. No, no, that's, that's pavers. Let me make sure we're using the right terms. Porous paving is something the trust will accept. Yes. yes. And the, the, a great example of that is Green Valley's um, parking lot. And how much more expensive is that, Brian? To run porous paving, they shut the entire, they have to pay for an entire run of an asphalt plant to run porous paving. <laughs> so my suggestion, if you're going to do it, you want to talk to Pulte, so Pulte, because they have to shut the entire plant down to pave their alleyways with their porous paving. And that's why they have not done their paving with their alleyways yet, because if you run a, it's very expensive to run a run of so just, just porous paving. Just have Pulte do the 270 feet when they do their alleys. Um, that could be an option, but I'm, they haven't, they're looking to do the alleys at the very end before they, when they're done building all their buildings. Right, so we could leave it as grass until that time and look at it at that point. Tell them where, tell Pulte we're interested. Maria. What significant um, feature will this benefit? Like, why is this in? It, it seems like it's 270 feet. What are we saving? And is it, like, what's, well, I guess my question is, what's the danger of having paving for this little run of the trail? We can only guesstimate what we're saving or what we're, that's why we're no, all I, saving, I think that's directed saving, at the land trust. It's really directed at French and Pick to ask them, like, what is, why? Why for this short, you know, what, how many feet is it wide, four feet wide by 270 feet? Like, what is the, the environmental impact that we are so concerned with? I can't. I can address the board. Okay. It's the language that was agreed upon in the easement, and it is just another attempt to reduce impervious surface on a conserved land. It's a small property, and that they were the terms of the easement. I didn't write the easement, that's the easement that was recorded. It is extremely difficult to amend an easement for that purpose without conservation gain. So that's our responsibility is to enforce our easements, which is why I felt I, we had to bring it to your attention, because the easement clearly states trails, if any, must be covered with wood chips or purse or a surface. And I, I would disagree with your, your, your um, conclusion. The original easement between Hankin and Western Land Trust said pretty much everything except one paragraph where it got really, really uh, restrictive as far as paving and pores and impervious surface and all that, where the original one didn't have that in it at all. So I disagree with your conclusion. It was done more than just a casual thing that was done. It was done for why? I just can't imagine a group like French and Peck not doing that for a reason. I only have the existing easement to go by, the latest one. So I can take it to my board if you want to postpone it. It's not my decision. My job is to simply, you know, let you know what the terms of the easement are, and they are the existing terms of the easement. Well, I guess, what, Brian, could we uh, approve the change order? And if you get to talk to your board and they change or are going to amend the Easement? They're not going to, I'll tell They're you not going to amend it? it. Okay. It's really difficult to amend. <laughs> well, then we can't definitely do it without amending the easement. I, mean, I, would, I think the best option to be in compliance with the easement and get the surface that you want is to explore the porous paving for that number of feet. And if you can do it in the church with it. And we have. Job. We just yeah. talked about that. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. Temporarily. I will speak. I'll, 
I'll speak with the contractor tomorrow to get a copy to get the change order process started for the cost. To find out what it would cost to change it to force. There's a lot of us that are trying to get this trail done this year. Um, and I think we still can. We just leave that section out until we can do that section. Brian. John, at the last meeting, you had conniptions about change orders at the last meeting. I'm allowed to have conniptions. And we've got them again. I want to see you get excited yet again. You want to what? I see you get excited. Yes. Brian, you have no idea. As a small business owner, I can walk into my office and say, Hun, can we do this? And she says, yes, and I can actually get something done. You know, we're with a municipal government. It's a lot more time consuming. Anyway, yeah, I got some explaining to do when I get home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you could try calling Tammy Hun. Um, so was this change order going to reduce the cost of the project because we weren't going to be paving. What we're doing is authorizing a change order. We don't oh. know what that change oh, so order is going to be. Order has to be prepared okay. and presented. So it wasn't to vote on it. It was to yeah. say, go okay. ahead and, and make one to show us. So are you going to ask for one if you just leave it grass and one if it would be, you want the options? Correct. Grass and course pavement. Okay, thank you. And let me ask you a question. And, and there's no right or wrong answer. I, I can only tell you my my feelings, and I'm just curious if you would have an opinion or care to share. Um, my idea of the, the fellowship trail was from Weatherstone tying into the Township Park. And our, I have a vision of mom and dad with a three-year-old in a stroller coming down, following their, their eight-year-old on his bicycle to a soccer practice or something. And to me, and there may be some board members that disagree with me, but it's paved. It's, you know, other than that, it kind of ruins well, the, plan the, the effectiveness paved. of coming down to use the apartment. So, we, I know I'm, not, I'm asking you for an opinion. Do you think that's possible? I, I, I have no problem at all with a vision for the trail. I've been aware of this trail for longer probably than a lot of people here. The unfortunate news is this is how the easement reads. And I think we can solve the problem by doing the, the portion. <coughs> and this, this also lends itself to when the sewer plants are, are being discussed for sale, they're all under conservation easement. So it really is in everyone's best interest to read. Look at the notification language and the review and what the conditions of the easements are. They are also designed with good intent and maybe not the ability, like any of us don't have the ability to see what future conditions may be. So if this is more expensive, but it solves the problem for now, going forward, you know, maybe no, we'll be more It is tough to predict the future and, and exactly. how things are. Sarah? One thing Pam had said earlier, though, and I remember when one of our <coughs> West Vincent Land Trust landowners wanted to change in the easement was what was the environmental benefit? So what was, could, can, is there something the township can offer to offset if you're going to increase the amount of impervious ground cover, what might you do to make it up? And that's part of your creative thinking, Mr. Chairman, is what is the environmental offset that might be a part of it that would incentivize the, the easement holder to say. Will you hit her, John? <laughs> they can't change the easement. I mean, they can, no, they but they're can. not going and, to. And Mike, what I'm telling you is I have seen an easement be changed, but it was oh, no. because there was an offsetting environmental gain. It's not just even a wash. It can't be a wash. You can't well, it can be a wash. It could be whatever the easement holder wants but, to change. But the, no, poli no, the policy says it's got to be a gain. It, there is there is one possibility, and we had discussed this briefly, and then I know the board was not in favor of it. Um, I had suggested originally that French and Pickering be the holder of the trail easement. And that way we could create a new overlay easement and be the monitor and enforcement of that new trail easement. And we are obligated to ask for a stewardship donation to accompany every easement we hold, and I know that you were not in favor of going ahead with that. 
that may be a way to get around this by creating a new trail easement that allows the paving for this. It's just specific to the trail. I, I could try that. But so another would, easement to go on top of the one you easement, have, yeah, which, which will then allow it. And your public benefit, your conservation gain, would be to allow public access to this previously conserved land. That's a conservation gain, which didn't exist before. So you're saying for the $2,100, $2,500 to the trust. $2,500 to the trust, and then we can pay it. I'm not saying that absolutely. I'm saying that's a possible solution to this. And I had talked to Rob about it. I had even, you know, revised the easement to reflect French and Pickering as the holder. And I know the $2,500 stewardship donation was the deal breaker. Yeah, keep it grass. Grass is cool. Grass is so, fine. You can stroll and roll it, you know, those. Whatever. So if you don't want that additional time. Hey, young lady over there. Okay, let's move. Let's move on. I think we've covered that. We approve it. I think we should. We still have to we still have to take a vote and I think we need to do the change of it despite Brian's opinion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is the, uh, no, I went too far. Ten. Cool. Field maintenance. Okay. I move that the board authorize the hiring of Windview, Wind, Windview Athletic Fields to do maintenance on the soccer field and baseball field for the fall 2017 season and spring 2018 season as submitted in the proposal dated July 11, 2017. And the total amount of six thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars. I second the motion. Um, I assume this came from Parks and Recs, so it's their recommendation, mm -hmm. and it's a <clears throat> twice a year thing. Yeah. Oh well. Hmm. I'm not really sure. If it's just twice. They, Is it a two-year thing? It's two seasons, but it, they might come in the end. Oh, they come. Yeah, October, come November, April, May, May, September. Any questions from the audience on what we're looking at? I know it's difficult. Last chance. Do you have any questions? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is uh, revising uh, the fee schedule for commercial uh, inspections. I move that the board approve resolution 20-2017 revising the West Coast fee schedule for 2017 in the form Submitted to the Westminster Township Board of Supervisors consisting of seven pages, including sections for residential new construction, commercial new construction, general permits, fire code, official fees, Board of Appeals fees, Board of Supervisors fees, Township printed materials, miscellaneous fees, fees, subdivision land development fees, engineering and legal fees, land planner and traffic engineer fees, storm water ordinance management fees, with an electrical fee schedule attached to the 12 pages. A second. Um, Joe, does this go into effect right away? It's beginning tomorrow morning? Yes. I'm a little confused. I, I can count to 12. The last thing said the electrical fee schedule is attached. I, I probably did put the electrical fee schedule in, the, in your book. Okay. So I can count correctly, and it's not there. Yes. So the seven pages is, but the twelve. What this is, folks, somebody realized um, that the commercial part of our fee schedule was out of date and would not have covered our costs. So this is raising those rates to make sure if we ever do get a commercial inspection that it does start covering our costs. Sarah? Changing it from what to what? And are there other changes besides commercial? They're all over the ballpark. Most of can them you, relatively... Can you tell us what they are? <laughs> the review fee is going up. I'm not sure of the number of it. And uh, from the price per square footage is the biggest, the biggest changes. All right. So what did it used to be? 
Was it 25 cents a square foot? The one no, now is 35 cents. All right, so there's a parcel. That, there's a project in the township that's being reviewed as a commercial project now. And so it's like, is this, there's already one, John. So do you grandfather that one? There's no application. There's no application for anything at this point. No building permit. The, because the review is being done by somebody who needed to have commercial review engineering skills. There's no building permit. So you're just passing this so that when the building permit is issued, you can charge this one person more. Is that spot zoning? First of all, it's not spot zoning. zoning. <laughs> no. spot I asked the same zoning. question. To, to cover our costs. Uh, we have a right to do that at any particular time. Um, who knows what we might have five things happen in the next few months. Why are you shaking your head? I, it just makes good sense to cover our costs. I'm shaking my head. You know why. It feels like dirty pool. That's why I'm shaking my head. So. Yes, and I, Sarah, I thought the exact same thing. I didn't. I did. That's the first thing I brought up. But apparently it's not. It's something that they've been working on for a while. It's trying to get our fees in line with the other townships around us, or anybody actually, because I don't think they've been raised for 15 years. Uh, yeah. We don't necessarily want to be like the township no, around agree. us. No, I agree. I agree 100%. But we do want to cover our costs. Yes. And the government should always cover the costs. And I think it goes a lot more. Right now. Brian, I think that's all to say. Well, Seth, we've had four commercial permits that I know come through in the last almost two years. We had two for Pulte. We've had one, at least one for uh, the, uh, Mr. Miller's cheese. And I can tell you from going through this process in the last eight, nine months, looking at this fee schedule, is that the cost of the review and the inspections were not covered by the fees collected. They were not high enough to cover the review fees for the permits issued for the wastewater treatment plant or for the... Um, and you mentioned four. I know there's, I thought there was four, I can't think of four. Three of those. Pulte had the um, community center, which was viewed as a commercial building. Like that might be the other one that I just don't know about the name of. But we've had the Pulte Wastewater Treatment Plant and the Pulte um, Community Center and the review of the building plan for the Christian Hills Farm. The collective permit fees are not covering the costs of what it costs to go through the review process. I think, John, part of my reaction is, is that we've been taking you guys are doing a good job of keeping the legal fees down. So we're getting more work by the engineers. So it's like, is this just one more way to help? It's, it. well, first off, I disagree with your premise that we're doing a good job yeah. keeping the legal fees down. Well, <laughs> we don't get to see Joe very often. We like Joe a lot, but... But I well, see we have a lot, doing, of, a lot of things going on in the township. You guys are paying Cedarville engineers to do a lot of things that we used to do by volunteers or by our township manager. And I understand that that's how you're choosing to manage things, but it doesn't necessarily um, always save money. What type of things are, do we used to do without an engineer? Our, township, our previous township manager would do a grant application. We wouldn't pay. For the road stuff? No, not the road stuff, but what you did something for Chester County, right? It was last year we applied to help apply for the DPP grant for the right. Zoning Works. That's the only grant application we've worked with. And Erica's got some of her own. Erica's got oh, yeah. several okay. applications this right, year. Right, but, but, but we paid them to do the DPP grant application. Is that something that, that a manager usually typically doesn't do? Every, every municipality is different. Some municipality asks us as for our assistance, some municipalities. Well, maybe Erica wasn't comfortable with that one. I'm guessing we're, we're going on, we're going off the rails here. What other? What's before us is adjusting the commercial fee schedule. And so, in all that schedule, those are the only two items: the event and the square footage. Oh God! Well, I don't know about that. I mean, there's seven pages of rates. I don't but know how many of them are changed? Too many. There might be four. Oh, oh okay. Four so this is just a repeat of everything except for those four houses. So you didn't highlight, highlight the four so they know which ones they're voting on. Maybe. I did send them to John. 
Seven to nine. So I you, asked for them. You know about two of them. Well, I looked at them and I was looking for something going from $1,000 to $10,000 and I didn't see any. Okay, so you know, it went from 25 cents to 35 cents. Yes, they were all cents. very reasonable, as I recall, when I read them. She sent them to me days ago. Anyway, any other questions? As chance. Um, when we were building our house, we had stormwater stuff, and one day it was not Cedarville, it was a different engineering firm, and there's this young guy wandering around out there making sure our silk fences were still in place, and to see what had changed, and I said, I called the township and I said, you know, if you want to call and say, has anything changed? Because why should I get billed for a guy to come out and look at the same situation it was a week ago? You if know? he applied for and an so, apartment a week ago, he was being billed under that time. No, know. no, I mean, he, the, the engineer guy was coming back. It's like he had all of these building permits on his list, so just he went by every one every week, and I was getting billed for it, whether it was necessary or not. So that's part of what I'm reacting to is, if Brian, we get a review letter from Brian, the Planning Commission, everyone says resubmission required. Well, maybe it's not always required. Maybe it doesn't, maybe we're doing too many reviews has very little to do with it. This is a posted fee schedule, so anybody that's going to do work in this township on the commercial is going to have the opportunity to open up our website and look at it and determine their cost. That's all So there's only one application pending, one project in the works that you know of, right? Everything currently that's being it's open has been reviewed under the previous schedule. Right, but anything going forward, Tammy said there's no building permit. Well, we can't say, you know, we know there's going to be something in the future. We can't say we'll wait till that is. We're doing it now. We're just trying to make it fair for everybody in this tax. You want your neighbor to pay for these commercial. We don't. We want them to pay for it. If you, I mean, that's what you're doing. If you don't want to raise the fee, knock on John store and say, hey, cough up 20 bucks for somebody. All right. Um, my question is, is, are these fees going to stay? You talked about people needed to be able to figure out, project their costs they were going to have in, in their development. And so they knew what the costs were when they started. And are you increasing the costs for those people now to finish their jobs? Well, no. this is something that no, we're any permits that have been pulled, this is just for going on from, from tomorrow morning on any new permits. A, a, new, a new project, not yes. an old project. Well, but a new permit. So it's a project that's got a permit waiting. Okay, so I'm not sure what permit means. I'm going to no, wrap up this discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is, I don't have uh, under anything under. I guess an announcement. No, this is an announcement. Do you care to make it? Okay. Uh, we have, uh, there's an announcement that we're looking for volunteers. We have an open position on the Park and, Rec Park and Recreation Commission and also on the Sustainability Committee. So if you would like to. Uh, Volunteer on either one of those committees, you can contact the township office, go to the township website, or email me, and we'll get your application to the board. One, one position for each. Any questions on that? Two sustainability, one park and rec. Uh, have we gotten recommendations from either the Parks and Rec or Sustainability Committee? Park and Rec, sustainability, yes, it's too much. Yeah, it's too much from sustainability. Say that again? Just Park and Rec. What did we recommend? Well, you, you accepted your we accepted, re a resignation. accepted the resignation. But I just like to point out that that resignation, I think the term is up in December. It is. It is. So it's tricky. I'm not sure yeah. that you can wait till January for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's really relevant right now, but that's my own opinion. There's no real rush to fill that space. 
Thank you, Tom. Um, any questions on that? Next item is the MMO 2018 Police Pension. Is that an announcement? Yeah. So we're approving something that's not been calculated. So we are approving the funding of the police pension for next year. Seventy three thousand four hundred twenty two dollars. Yes. Okay, I move that the board approve the funding for MMO of seventy three thousand four hundred and twenty two dollars. Plan year 2018. 2018, yes. A second motion. Uh, this is an annual fee that we have to pay. Tell me, I, I know you, this is unfair, but do you have any idea what the history's fee was? It was actually 60, what about $10,000 less? Less, so mm -hmm. what about 10000 Yes. Do they, they really don't give you a reason though, do you? But that's with the... They give us the, like letter B, you'll see that number was given to us. And letter E was given to us. I would imagine, Joe, that are you familiar with these things? Mm -hmm. That with the aging of the police force and, and the aging of your employees and the number of families and so on, does that and have an effect on this? It has an effect, and also what your assumptions are for your rate of return to keep your plan funded are generally these days higher than what the actual market has produced in the last five years. So you have a discrepancy there. Um, so this is not a discretionary number. This is a number your actuary says you have to pay to keep your plan funded. Yeah, but it always, well, it used to scare me, it still does, whenever you see that many numbers for the comma in there. Well, you also get some money back. You get a level contribution back. Yes, yes. The state contributes to the fund. Okay. Yeah, so it's not, that's not, it's not our actual cost. cost. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. On. Yes, Brent. Do we know what MMO stands for? Oh, God, I knew there was going to be a question. Minimal Municipal Obligation. There you go. Minimal Municipal Obligation. But it doesn't tell us what it's for. Correct. It That's why I put police pension in parentheses. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Good job, Ken. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is 14, hire a traffic engineer. I move to hire Panoni as the traffic engineer to study, to do a study on the gate at South Chester Springs Road and Eagle Farm for the total amount of $800. Yeah. 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 That $800, the second, that $800 was not including any attendance, correct? That's correct. correct. Any questions? You got the second one. Jane, go ahead and second. Um, can you tell us the focus of the study? Say that again? The focus of the study, can you tell us? The South Chester Springs Road oh, and I get that, but what about it? I mean, are they looking at the size of the road? Or are they looking at the, I mean, what's the? Want an opinion on all sorts of things that he can think of. I don't want to tell him what his opinion should be. Does that make sense? Well, have you given him parameters? We're given parameters of South Chester Springs Road, 401, and it, and going south. On, on Actually, I think it's on only Eagle Farms and South Chester Springs Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only the two. We already have the 401. Right. Sorry. So wasn't that part of the study when you previously had the three municipalities <coughs> doing Eagle Farms and South Chester Springs and buyers that I think, he What's did, study I think he did fires and he did do part. He, he did uh, so he's previously he did, did. Farms and he did. Well, he did part of Eagle Farms. No, he, did that. he just didn't do the gate in. Right. But it was more interpretive, not an opinion. This is going for a conclusion. Right. Will this also include the potential or future impact of the uh, Sunderland Road when it's completed? 
real quick question. <coughs> if, if you don't do that, you've got a big hole because you've got that big development south of there, and once it comes in, it's going to have an impact or potential impact for sure. If, if I may, Mr. Chair, yes. this is a very limited study. We've heard people that say they want the gate open. We've heard people that say they want the gate closed. We're seeking, we're seeking professional advice. It's as simple as that. Very, very limited, very, very basic analysis just to get some general advice. No formal traffic studies and all that. It's a very, very limited scope. He, and the reason why he's picked is because he studied the general area around there already and already has the benefit of some of the numbers of previous studies. So that's all. We're seeking some professional advice, which is why next month we're going to talk about the gate. Well, we have the benefit of some professional advice. And then people can come out and say why they want it open. People can come out and say why they want it closed. And everyone in between can make whatever argument they like. So that's, that's the plan. Yes. Um, so I was going to ask the question how they were chosen. So I understand that they were chosen because they've got previous experience mm -hmm. with studying that area. Right. My only concern with that then would be that they already have a preconceived notion as to their opinions. And given that it's a limited scope and not including some of the other roads that potentially are going into it, my fear is that the result back then will be as biased as what is happening going well, in. First of all, I, I don't think he's biased. He's a traffic engineer. I don't think, quite frankly, he cares whether the gate's open or not open. No, no, no. And that, yes, I, I, bias is probably the wrong word. But just saying he's got an opinion going in because he's already done studies in those well, areas. I'm not familiar with that opinion. If he has one, I haven't heard it. To date, I haven't had one, and I've been in meetings with him, and if Eric was here, she would tell you that that, that wasn't his purpose. His purpose was to collect data, um, traffic counts, and we have that. We've had Yeah, it. I guess I'm concerned that if it's limited in scope, and while I can appreciate trying to get a quick read and some information to go on, if it's limited in focus or and scope of what they're looking at, that it just leaves us open to this conversation to occur for the next five years because of the limitation in the focus right now. I mean, honestly, and, and this is just the way I operate, but I would rather have a full encompassing study to give us some definitive information so that so that the appropriate decision can be made with complete information going into it. So again, that's my opinion, but I would like to, I'm telling you that. Is there any way that he could add something? Yeah. I asked him Conceptually. For, I asked him for a price. He gave a price. I told him it was about the gate. He analyzes it however he analyzes it. If he feels that he needs to gather more data to give advice based on reasonable degree of expert opinion, then fine, he'll ask us for more money to do a further, further, more elaborate study. He's the expert. We told him the issue, said, give us some advice. And that's, that's what he had quoted us. Um, if he needs to do more studies, in his opinion, he'll do more studies. But I'm not going to tell him what to do. And just in um, fairness, this didn't come about, Tam we didn't have Tammy call, we didn't have Michael or John or David. We had Joe call. We wanted opinion. We're not looking for anything other than an opinion. More. Um, I've dealt with two different, not this one, traffic engineers down on 401 West Pikeland Township. And I believe you're doing the right thing. They are not, they're not going to give you opinions. They're fact-based. And they, you know, so I think you're doing absolutely the right thing. I don't think you're going to get an opinion or something that's, somebody has an idea here. The, the ones that I've dealt with, I haven't dealt with this. They're very pure scientific type of people. And, uh, so I think you're doing the right thing. Thank you. I just want to make sure they have all the information because when the spring traffic study was conducted, none of fire station phase two was built out. So that wasn't even interesting. You're going to be able to ask all those questions and, and okay. change. Yeah, are you guys going to look at the environmental and historic impacts to the opening the room? That's not part of his analysis. I, I as a uh, resident down there, think it should be, because there will be an environmental and historic impact. Right. Well, you're welcome. When we have 
Okay. Discussion, a lengthy one next month. You're welcome to come point those out. We'll Could you ask your EAC for an opinion? Say that again? Could you ask your EAC for an opinion? No. Why? No, just say, could you? Could you? I don't Did you. <laughs> I told you I'm hard of hearing and I have difficulty hearing. Yeah, it's okay, no problem. Um, what's the answer? Could, we could? Sure. Take the right opinion. All this yeah. is going to be above board and a public meeting, at least one public meeting, and you'll be able to ask any question you want and entitled to an answer. Well, I, I, I think what we're the residents are trying to say is we'd like the information you gather to be good information so that when we have the discussion, that we're all on the same page, we all feel that it's good information. Um, so if we have a big gaping hole about the environmental and historic implications, or we have with this road study something that doesn't quite cover it all, then we got another problem because we'll be having a discussion about how this didn't uh, fit the bill. Right. If we need further studies or further analysis, I'm sure we'll be able to comment on that and direct us to whatever. Brian, one thing is, I don't think you want to hire a traffic engineer to do an environmental and historical study. That's going to be someone else. But for this traffic study, I do hope that we include all the roads that are planned with Sunderland Avenue or Road, whatever it is, being planned right now and included in the modeling and analysis the city does. The approach he's taking as opposed to going out and counting cars, et cetera, makes sense that way. But I do think you, you need to cover all the roads. And I think that was Jen's uh, concern with the last study is there were <coughs> developments that had roads planned, but they weren't included. But he couldn't in include, there's no the traffic to include. Until the, road, until the road's built, there's no traffic for him to count. Well, part, part but he could do it as a Part of this study advice. will involve some projections. Um, it's, a, it's a very basic study. I, I, if, we I, need I more, if we need more, we'll go get more. But I think you, the, the big thing is, and, and you, know, you haven't read out, I don't know what the roads are that are included in the study. And that's all my concern is, is that I don't want somebody to say, you forgot about this road and you know 40 homes over there. He has two things in the scope of work. Documentation of existing conditions and future condition evaluation. So I assume so future, will be in future condition evaluation, I assume, would take into play, just assuming future development. But again, instead of, let's not do tonight what we have planned to do a month from now. Let's just get something from somebody that knows what they're talking about. And if we need to supplement it and we need further studies, we can look at that. But we just want to start with something. Yes. I have two very basic procedural questions. One, can you tell me the name of the firm again? It's Pannoni. Pannoni? It's Brian Keefe at Pannoni. He's one of the principals. Okay. And my second question is, when do they expect to conclude the work? And will it be possible to read the study results prior to the meeting in a month from now? It is our, I, I don't know when it's going to be done, but he knows there's a time deadline. Okay. Um, and it's our, I wouldn't call it a written policy, but it's our hope to always put data out to the public as soon as we get it. We're not interested in hiding anything. But that would be posted prior to the, to the meeting. Or? Prior, yes. So the website would have yes. to, okay, great, thank you. But I don't know when he's done his work. We don't control that. No, no, I know. When we get it, you get it. Okay. You had a question? I think my neighbors have asked them, but now I'm sitting here thinking, can we make sure that the whole scope of Chester Springs Road is included because it's narrow. I mean, 18 years ago or now 20 years ago, we were told we had to have either a one-way ingress or it had to be closed because it couldn't handle two-way traffic. <coughs> There's water on both sides of the road. The road cannot be widened. So I don't want it just to focus just on the gate, but I think it needs to encompass the entire scope of the road, environmentally, historically, and just the road surface itself. He's looking at the, the gate. whole road, not just the gate. He's looking the at the, the gate. gate. Well, and he's taking in the <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't think that that encompasses let me, everything. Let me okay. finish. He's looking at the gate and he's taking into consideration existing conditions. 
Just at the intersection. Just at the gate. He's looking at the road that exists there now as it relates to opening the gate or closing the gate. He's looking at the gate. He's not doing complete study of all roads and necessity for public improvements and all that. That's not what he's doing. He's looking at the gate. And to whatever extent we need more information, we'll ask him to do more information. We're going to have the opportunity to do that. We're having a meeting next month. Okay. Great. I think my question is, is then you're saying we'll have this discussion, but there won't be a vote that night? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't commit to that. There'll be discussion. I, I can't. Depends on how it plays out, whatever. But you know, come on, you've watched us up here for how many years now? Is that what we're about? Is that we, we would have this meeting on December 24th at 8, 8 o'clock. <laughs> I hate to point out the obvious, but there's a road that leads to, to the gate, and currently uh, school buses are not permitted down towards the gate because there's not enough room. So, um, there's a road that leads to the gate. It's the only way you can get to the gate and the only way you can get back to 401. So the road is relevant. I'm sure he'll notice that. Specifications. Any other questions, folks? Yes. I, I um, have been perplexed by what's going on as well the, um, in Chester Springs Road, and it's been going on for a very long time. And so I kind of, um, put a chronolog in chronological order the things that have happened recently. And um, I would like to speak to um, Gloria, these issues. I, 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 I'll, I'll give you a couple minutes, but what we're doing here is we're under this agenda item is to hire a traffic engineer. We, what I believe you want to do. OK, no, I'm, I'm in the next phase. OK, but you want to you have the meeting next month tonight, and, and we're just going to go yeah. over those same things. She's going to bring up something at the well, public have, comment. Okay. Not yes. Okay. A storyline, but you're saying keeping it, keep it out of this uh, agenda. For a few minutes. Comments, sure. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is the last item on the agenda is the. Uh, purchase of a truck for the road department? I moved to purchase uh, the 2018 Dodge Ram 550, 5,500 chassis, 5,500 chassis, and service body in the total amount of $93,278. Second. What this is, folks, this is something that was in budget item for 2016. We delayed it because of the road program uh, and other costs, uh, Front Creek Bridge. And I'll never get drunk. <laughs> um, anyway, there's a 2010 truck that I believe 2001, 2001, F550, that is um, is still in operable shape, um, but the body needs a lot of work, or it's just not functional. They want to use it as a backup for a plow, um, and they're not going to sell it. Um, they're just going to keep the plow and use it. And this new truck will be better for them. Anyway, it's a replacement of an ongoing equipment um, budget, and it's scheduled for this year. Any questions? All right. A truck some time back, they got the body, I'm going to call it the dump body, the back part of it. They had it done, in, I believe, in stainless so that it lasts longer. The existing one is carbon steel, I guess. Is the body we're going to get in stainless yes. and carbon steel corrosion resistant? It is. Yes. I do, I do remember seeing the word stainless. Yes. It is stainless. going to be stainless again? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the old truck, they're, they're going to uh, they're going to put a flatbed on it and continue to use it to plow and spread. Right. Does that then mean that the frame of it is not in too bad a condition? I guess the frame isn't, yeah. but the body has been patched with road signs and then painted over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's the reason for that. Right. Bed. <laughs> My kind of <laughs> Any other questions? All those in 
you want to see pictures of it, Brian, I got them right here. Uh, next, folks, we are to that part with a, we call it public comment on non agenda items. Gloria. Okay, well, I have a chronology here and I would like to speak to it. Sure. I am totally confused by what's going on. I'd like to reach out for a fighter to the bike. Would you mind? John, make sure John can you hear me? It's easier for me. It is on, I think. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to go through a little history, and uh, you may not like it, but I'm going to do it. Pull it down a little bit. Can you hear me? Better. Is it on? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, at the August 7th um, Board of Supervisors meeting, I informed the board that a group of homeowners had taken action as follows. Planted signs throughout the community to save South Chester Springs Road. Two, authored a petition document to be signed by not only West Vincent Township constituents, but also residents in neighboring townships. Handed to supervisors copies of the petition document asking where the township stood on issues of Chester Springs Road and the next day delivered a star as a starter 50 plus signatures I had singularly acquired promising hundreds more for the upcoming August 21st board meeting. Mr. Jacobs had ver veritably no comment other than he would make calls first thing the next morning, August 8th. It now appears one of his intended calls was to the Honorable Pre Representative of the 155th Pennsylvania District, Becky Corbin, for her to send a letter at the behest of the Board of Supervisors of Westminster Township to secure approval from PennDOT for the ungating and all weighing of South Chester Springs River. So, John Jacobs that never made that phone call. That was not correct. I made the call. I, I didn't asked. say, oh yeah, the call. Okay, yes. well, you're one. Okay, I'll look at you. We'll look at you as one. It's one person. Yeah. person. Um, yes, because well, PennDOT... I do what you're trying to understand. Okay, well, PennDOT wanted the gate open before they do any uh, safety issues on floor one in Chester Springs Road. I said that was not... decided to go the PennDOT route. That's yeah. what I mean. Why... PennDOT, I mean... South, I mean, Chester Springs Road and 401 has been an issue of safety. It's been brought up for the last two years. I've been to 35 years, it's been an issue. Yeah. Exactly. So, PennDOT wanted us to open the gate before they would do anything to make the 401 and Chester Springs Road safer. And I said, well, no, that doesn't make any sense. The only thing that uh, West Vincent would agree on, if we were to open the great gate, is for both of them to be done at the same time, concurrently. Not that we'd open the gate before they do any safety issues. But that's a huge step to go from keeping a gate and opening it up to the to the world. I mean, I don't understand. Well, if it's ungated, it, people will be traveling all over. And if it's uh, gated, it's protected. Well, so it's, and I won't do anything to 401 at Chester Springs Road unless the gate's open. That's so, what I mean. Right. So they're not giving a choice. No. They would not give us a choice. Right. So you don't, there's no... So we, where we may not have a four-way stop or any type of safety issues at 401 and Chester Springs Road if we don't open the gate. And if we don't open the gate, then we just won't have those four-way stops. So this stops. is your uncertainty more than it is playing games. I, I just I just assume we kind of... Uh, some of us cons consider that... You're playing with us. No, you know? we were not, hoping to get the 401 the first, August 7th was the first time there was any conversation uh, really about Chester Springs Road. Oh, no, it's been going on for years. Oh, no, no, I mean recently on the, the PennDOT. Oh, the PennDOT, yes. That, yeah, that, is that was new. Yes. We never, nobody ever said anything about it. Okay, so I've been perplexed about that for months now. Okay, and uh, that you made your call on August 8th, and now it appears... Um, one of the calls went to, to uh, Becky Corbin. Now, why would you go through the because, Becky Corbin? Because we <laughs> you have you to put pressure. To do that? No, no. I wanted to. I wanted PennDOT to agree that if they if they would agree to doing both concurrently, if it's going to happen, 
I couldn't, they would not do it unless we opened the gate, and we weren't going to do that. So, so you, I had to dialogue. Kind of All I was side. doing is getting them to uh, agree to the work concurrently. That's it. So that if we do open the gate, then they'll put the stop signs in. And if we don't open the gate, they won't put the stop and signs in. And they can give you that ultimatum. Well, it's their road. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we have no well, control. Well, the four way. Over. But I, we four were able to get it. really bad. I mean, it would help the They speeds. actually gave us the ultimatum that we could not. I know. Put a gate at South Chester Springs Road. We did it anyway, only to find out that they were wrong. But, okay. but that's here near there. That's that's not where we're going. I'm not really opposed to the, the four way, but uh, the gate I think should stay, and I think the four way would help. help right. The we can't traffic. Have both. We have no surveillance there whatsoever. <laughs> I understand. Nobody's fine for anything. It's and we can't have both. That's we're the debating this now, and we're what well, we've said we're going to dedicate a lot of time in the future just to have the same conversation with more people in the room. Well, I'm glad you're sharing this because I thought it was all secrecy. Uh, it was secret behind our back type thing. Well, um, I can't imagine how you would think that. Just, well, because nobody was speaking up, and we had no, you know, uh, no, we had a traffic study. We had it put it on the website. Um, We've, we've discussed it several meetings, but anyway, that that's your your feeling. Okay, apologize. so so PennDOT approves the plan and uh, honors Representative Corbin, and uh, and everybody uh, goes their way. Um, two weeks later, on September fifth, um, in the board meetings, uh, I think um, Jen remarked about why you didn't even look. At our, did you look at our um, petition? I did. As a matter of fact, I went down through all the signatures. Then to see why on September 5th would you say we got several? We only got several when we got hundreds. And several is defined in the dictionary uh, as two, but not too many. So how could you say several when we had hundreds? So then I'm thinking, well, what is that about? Okay, so I'm, I'm being very honest here, and maybe it's irrelevant, but uh, I've just been skeptical and wondering what the game is. I'm just trying to get in the game. Um, okay, the, this entire experience with the Board uh, of Supervisors has been disheartening and disappointing, where an elected officials blatantly dismiss subjects of concern, like defying full disclosure. Okay, that's what I've been feeling. If nothing else, this constituents, you know, have been out of the loop, and um, and this is unethical. The plan, which seemingly evolved, it seems to be a plan that evolved in May of 2017 without informing or addressing the people. So I'm wrong there, but we still didn't address it. We didn't address any of this, and um, from a homeowner's perspective. All this uh, uncertainty is, and not, not non-discussion, is just kind of frightening. Um, yeah, the uh, the ungated as long as uh, the uh, honorable Becky Corbin uh, Pendot told her that as long as the uh, gate is open. Uh, and then they'll begin their work. But are you ready? I mean, are you guys ready for that? Uh, that's another thing. I mean, when are we going to put consolidate um, the more. decision and uh, the the work that you need that needs to be done? I mean, this can go on for another twenty years. It's going on long enough. Um, well, I've been there since 1999 when told passed on that and just said, no, we're not going down that road. And, and he built a beautiful road for everybody else. I mean, why, why muck it up? <laughs> anyway, um, I've been, you know, wondering about the actions and motives, and, and maybe, and obviously, I'm wrong, but I, I feel better about expressing myself. Thank you. Lori, we'll never stop you from expressing. I hope. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments, Sarah? Um, what's the progress on the sewage sale? Say that again? The sale of the sewage plants. 
Um, Joe, would you kind of kindly jump in on that one? Uh, we're in negotiation. Negotiations going well. And any time estimates? It, I can't give you anything I can rely on. Okay. And were you involved in a discussion with Erica about the existing trails on the sewage parcels? Right? Pam mentioned that they, those properties were under easement and we have all sorts of issues with plants and trails and metering pits and so we're going to try to it's maintain. A, it's another the, mess that we're trying to clean up. So we are going to try to maintain the trails that are on those properties now. Well, I didn't hear about maintain trails. I'm hearing. About I don't mean keep them clean. I mean keep them available to our population. There's a whole list of properties with all different nuances. I can't keep track of them all, but Brian's on top of straightening everything. But if there's an easement for the trail, we can. It doesn't go away. You it doesn't go away. No, but if the right there way. isn't an easement for a trail, but there's in practice a trail, this would be the time to. If there's a particular trail that you, is concerned to you, send me and Brian an email. We'll make a point uh, to make this, sure. This had been brought up to Erica before, so I just. But I'm not familiar with the issue. Okay. That's a well, point well taken. If there's any, Brian, I hate to throw this at you, but when Erica gets back, oh no, don't, don't, don't pick up your pen. That costs us money. No. <laughs> well, we're no, it doesn't. We're we'll paying him now. He's yeah. writing. He's here. We so all your work here. Money for him to sit next to um, If there are any trails along or th that go through these properties that you survey, right? That you right. survey. And Barbara Dunn Mueller had offered to help identify those trails. We want to make sure that they are. Um, if there an easement needs to be drafted on those, Joe. Easements will need to be drafted. Say that again? Eastman's will need to be drafted. Okay. What, for a trail on a property? If we're, conveying, if we're conveying a property that has a trail on it and there's no easement, then we would need to do an easement. Right, we want to keep the trails open. Okay, good, good, good. Glad I remembered to ask about that. And Joe, I've been waiting for Brian, you. Brian, are you familiar with the different parcels and whether there's trails or not? I'm not familiar with all the potential for trails and parcels. I think we have to do an inventory. I will send you an email. Are there any grass trails that we can't see from inspection? Possible. Very possible. There many of them are perimeter trails. Pam can help. Yeah, there, and I had brought this up before. These properties are under conservation easement, and I had talked to Erica about uh, being part of the conversation through that, your conveyance review. And some of the trails are already mapped, and they're easily identified. They're natural surface trails. But it's really important that any operator that you're discussing conveyance with is really familiar with the terms of the easement. So going forward, we don't have any problems. We so, need a list of those properties and the easements on those properties. Yeah. Right. And, and we're happy to be part Some of things were conveyed by fee simple. Some things were conveyed by easement. Some things were so Well, divided. there are fee simple lands with conservation easements on them with, that will travel with the oh, land. Right. So that's why that's we, an easy we offered to be part of the conversation just to make sure everybody's on the same page before the lands can be out. Yeah, so and we can help with the trail identification. Thank you. Yeah. Erica's due back in two weeks, approximately? Or on um, four uh, weeks? Well, no, we need this like right now. Right? <clears throat> at the point where I, we need this oh, Pam, do you have a in 10 days. To give him? I do. Yeah. Say that again, Joe? We need this like right now. Um, can you, without Erica being here, how can we accomplish that? Pam, do you want to meet with Brian direct on it? Well, I can, yeah, and I didn't realize you were this far ahead in the process because we've been asked, if, asking for updates as you moved forward, but I think with Erica being out, that, you know, that, 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 didn't, that didn't stop things. Wait, yeah, and we weren't aware that we were moving that Jeff day. County? Aren't they recorded, these things? Well, but my conservation easements are recorded, some of the, and some of the trails are already mapped, so they're... But the easements are recorded. They are, you have copies. Anything of record, record, I don't care. Uh, but there are trails But that, if there's anything not of record, I have to know about, so I make it part of the record. Right. Oh, yeah. I, the, when this came up, I think it came up at a... I can't remember if it was sustainability or BAC. It was not Parks and Rec. It came up until I, Erica was there, and she and I talked about how we could identify those trails. And it was Pam and Barbara 
deal with, with the two resources. Okay, that, well, I mean, anybody but, that has... But, but the idea, Mike, is that there would be some trails. So <coughs> it might say there's a trail, but to really delineate where it enters the property and exits the property is important in maintaining not, that access. These are not established trails. They're just trails that came about on Any, property. Anything right? of record shows up in all the total right, work. They know what they're buying. They know it's right. under and subject but, to easements. But we believe there are Any some that are not... Record, I need to know. We so. believe there are some in practice not being recorded okay, that need I'd to be. I'd give Brian a list of those trails. If you know of any or Pam knows of any, just send him a list of where the, what properties these trails are on. Okay. So he could go look and see the trail and then do what he needs yeah, to do. We're going to research the record on every piece of property that goes somewhere. We're going to have yeah, anything on, on the record. And you've got copies of these. Anything not in the record, then we're going to be signing an affidavit and settlement saying there's nothing not in the record. So I need to make sure that well, we, we have. Yeah, the point is we really want to make sure they're in the record. So. All right. Yeah. The time is, time is time is expiring on us fast. Can Parks and Rec also have a copy of that since they've been working on trails? And sure. There's a whole list of subdivision trails that have been given to Park and Rec and I I handed it out to them again at yeah, the last meeting. The list of every single well, even subdivision property. trails are of record. They're a record. We're looking for the ones that They're aren't not recorded. Right. That are just trails well they're on private property or not on private property yeah, on these the parcels subdivision trails are the ones that have that are part of the deed and plan through subdivision or for, through fee simple we have that you have that right and that is so we're only looking for the ones that are not recorded well ones that you want that aren't recorded let's no. put that way. but they yeah okay okay so if you know the trail that's not recorded anywhere tell brian of that trail so that he can or Joe can get it on record. Right. So. Um, Joe said something today about something has got to happen somewhere, and I think you were referring about the gate, but what to mind the, um, we have a high density residential um, zone, the RDA, that we wanted to take off of part of, our, we wanted to remove from our zoning ordinance. Planning Commission is who we is. We were not allowed to talk about it because you got a letter from a lawyer and it was lawyer to lawyer stuff. This has been going on for more than a year. Are, are you going to take our handcuffs off sometime? That's up to the board. Board, are you going to take our handcuffs off sometime? We never placed any handcuffs. We just refused to take action because we didn't. Well, but the Planning Commission was told we could not work on that. Something. We could not discuss that. Oh, I think you can discuss anything you want, Joe, did we ever say that? Why not? Well, it was the message that came to us was there were lawyers involved. We the, could message, the message that got back to you is that we got correspondence threatening litigation because they considered it the confiscation of their property. And we just let that so threat. So if anyone's going to talk about it, they have to be very careful in what they say. Otherwise, the township's going to end up getting sued if and when they take action. But the plan. But we can talk right? about it. Can you, you can talk about it, but you already made a recommendation to the board. The board is doing. And yeah, so if you want. So to, the board's just not going to do it, right? Well, well what know. about determining whether it's really a valid threat of litigation? I guess until it's brought to us. Well, whether it's a valid threat of litigation or not, the board was presented with the alternatives, with the pros and cons, and the board has chosen not to go further with any action. So what you're talking about, I don't know. We're so basically, it's them recommending that we do something and we're just not going to take action. That's basically what happened. Did you recommend that? I, or did I you not ever recommend it? I don't think we ever got to the point to recommend it. Because oh, we, we did. Oh, we did? Well, we were definitely in favor of it, but I don't know. That, because we got a, the, I, I, you were there. Okay. Change, I could be wrong, but I... We which, got the yield study. There was, but, a, there was a, a recommendation from the Planning Commission that we do the rezoning and we did a, um, each individual board member did their own risk reward and decided not to pursue that. But oh, we didn't vote on that. We did not because no, there was nothing to vote on. Okay. okay. No, no board member made a motion, therefore That's there was right. no motion to vote on. To vote so, on. so I could send an email about it and then maybe. You could send us all the yeah. emails you'd like on that. Well, I saw you act on one very to quickly tonight. Until Mike or David or I make a motion to okay. do that. Okay. Uh, 
Brian brought up something that whatever happened to that RFP that the Trash Task Force drafted up for your consideration? You know, they did a marvelous job. On and then what happened? There were reasons it couldn't be consummated because, oh, I'm trying to think of a vendor or issue. There was worry about restraint of trade on some other um, haulers. Okay, because you, you had asked them to do a prepared hauler. RFP, but I think they analyzed that from every which way they possibly could, and they came up with. I, I really forget the conclusions, but it was really well written. Yeah, I remember it. You guys it, was, it was well written, well thought out, and the board couldn't do what was recommended legally. Okay, because of the restriction of trade, whatever business. Okay. I forget exactly why, but there were reasons. It was so long ago. Okay, and last meeting, Davy Waters brought up the risk to horses with the metal plates on the Davis Lane oh, Bridge. She did, she did, did anybody did. assess that? I think that's, did they do that yet? Well, they were going to, I don't know. Uh, did okay. you hear anything? There's some kind of treatment to it. Yeah, because it seemed metal. to me all you'd have to do would be to put a little glue, glue, <laughs> pattern, something, right. so it wasn't shiny. Yeah, they're working on that. I don't know if they've done it yet. Okay. Well, I just wondered what, because they haven't. Uh, there's not an obvious change if they did it, so I just wanted okay. to, if you were pursuing that. So, okay, I think I've run out for now. Unless Brian makes me think of something else. So every meeting I ask the status of the Box Hollow Trail, um, <laughs> and every meeting it just gets kind of dropped. So uh, before Park and Rec last time, I uh, they had their trail subcommittee there, and I asked Bill Holderness, who seems to be the point person on this. He said they have surveyed and flagged it. They're waiting for the road crew. No, we didn't actually flag it. We just marked the oh, trees marked where it was going right. to be. We want to flag it after it's clear. Right. So, what can we do to end this stalemate and get this? We trail? keep. Um, I just talked to Mark on Friday, and and I think I talked to him on Monday before that to find us two people out of his road crew to help, and then Bill and I will go out there with the two road crew and clear. It. At least do a rough clear to get started. Just add a bit of humor to that. Don't but take what I'm about to say seriously. We're going to put it on the agenda right after we get the French Creek Bridge done. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are working on, constantly working on that, trying to get the time. Okay, thank you. And actually, if you know any volunteers, if we get other volunteers. I have a husband with a tractor who would be glad to help. Okay, good. Brian, did you have a question? Art? This is for the township. I want to congratulate the township for stepping up to the bat here and getting the flagpole finally lit. Thank you. Mike. Well, I don't know who, but I want to thank you very much for doing that. Mike was um, more than instrumental. He paid for it. <laughs> and Doug. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Yeah, Harry, right, you had a question? Um, I have an announcement. Okay. This is an opportunity for people to have fun in the out of doors and do some good work. Um, William Penn Foundation is funding a great deal of uh, bringing different environmental groups together to try to protect, maintain, improve the qualities of the Delaware and Swookle rivers. Now, this fall, there's a training session for people who want to become stewards, uh, Schuylkill River stewards, and water, SWS, Schuylkill Water Stewards. Um, you'll learn about how to take water samples and how to assess the quality of the riparian buffers on the streams. And about three times, maybe four times a year, you will get a request saying, <coughs> Could you come out and help with doing some water monitoring on these days, or these days, or these days? And then you say, yes, you can, or no, you can't. And it's a great deal of fun, and you'll learn some stuff. And anyone who wants to, I've got 10 copies of this, and I'm doing it, and it's it's fun. You get to go out and see what's going on outdoors, and you are doing some good for the water. Keep one to John. John, you wanted one? Oh, I'd love one. Thank you. Anybody else up here? 
Make sure you leave some out there so people can grab them. Uh, oh, John, 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 Yes. Suzanne. Hi. Um, I have a few questions for you. Uh, life has been pretty busy in downtown Bertrandville lately. And PennDOT paved uh, Plum Springs Road, as you will know. And I think it's the first time in 40 years that it's been repaved, to be honest with you. Um, one of the things that disturbs me is that in the paving, they did not reopen the pipe on the side of the road that where the water drains down to, or should drain down to, a big grate that's at the corner of Hollow and Birchwood. And for the last probably six to seven years, that water has been flowing across the road and freezing. And I had presumed, and I should never do this, but I had thought that it was mentioned before and that the township would have brought this to the attention of PennDOT so that the pipe could be opened. I believe Erica did call, or Mark Hughes called, but that's more, they've, they've been notified about this like every year, and they chose not to do anything. But I will follow up on it tomorrow, find out who called and get back to you. Well, I'm, I'm concerned because now that the road is beautiful and terrific and wonderful, there's really going to be nothing to stop that ice from flowing across, and nothing to help people stop. So. Thank you for that. If PennDOT won't do it, can we get permission to clear it ourselves? Uh, is that a possibility? I think you can just do it. Joe's going to advise you just do it and don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a brilliant idea. Well, I'm part of your... Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that, that's interesting is I'm glad the Barons are getting a new garage, but I'm a little confused that they didn't seem to come for the Planning Commission to ask about building this new garage. Did and I know when I put up my running shed 15 or 20 years ago, I had to go in front of somebody and they all came out and paced and did and looked and made sure that I was, you know, in the right space and had enough property between my shed and the property line. And there was nobody who lived next door to me except a vacant open space. And years ago, Sally had said to me that she would have loved to have she would love to have a run-in shed just like ours, where their present parking space is. But they were turned down because of the steep slope conditions there. And I have to tell you, where they're putting it now, the slopes are even steeper, and it's a pretty big deal. Did they come before the planning commission or the zoning board or to know anything, about anything to build this? Not required for a building garage? permit. Uh, one. It's a building permit issue. And so they. There's no planning commission okay. necessary, to my knowledge. All right. And so they have their building permit, and that's and nobody looks at the steep slopes. And it oh. took two. It took two years to get their building permit. There was a lot of complication. They had to deal with PennDOT, even though they weren't dealing with well, the township. No they, no, they had to deal with both roads, frontage or PennDOT. They had to get a township occupant, highway occupancy permit as well. And part of why there's so much mess there is because of all the during construction stormwater management requirements and the post-construction there will be drainage from the garage to probably that same inlet, Suzanne. But they went through the township, Cedarville engineers. Brian, maybe you guys check that out, Steve yeah, Stokes, all that stuff. Yes, yeah, the project was reviewed for stormwater management and went through two reviews with my office for stormwater management, plus the building permit issue, plus PennDOT. And plus steep slope to yeah. examine the two, two years to get it back yeah. into the hill. So. So. Well, it definitely backs into the hill, but I'm just surprised that they were turned down for a run-in shed, which is far less complicated, on a, a less steep slope, and now they have this mega structure on the way. Now, I wouldn't know anything about that. Right. I think that was a setback and sight line problem, because we're... It's so specu it's speculation. I mean, it would have okay. been under his building um, code department. Thank you. Any other comments? Not intended items. Yes. Save everybody their rubber necking. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. At the 
last meeting, you guys fielded some questions about the Bryn Coed plans um, and the offer from an individual to buy a portion of what is slated to be the township park and indicated that you probably were not going to go with that offer. The one thing that everybody seemed to agree on, though, was that you guys want to conserve land as a township in general, reduce new houses going in for a variety of reasons that people are on both sides of the fence about. The land that is slated for your acquisition is about 72 acres, 60 of which is really unusable because it's steep slope and it's wet. The stormwater drainage basin, the de facto pond now, everything along the side of that is wet and unusable. You talked about, uh, Mike, you talked about a reluctance to get into the TDRs for the culvert property because of all the unknowns with the Bryn Coed property and what additional expenses might come up with a $1.6 million purchase price versus the 1.9 that's in the open space fund. There was a lot of feedback about how important the culvert TDRs would be though because they were gonna put in 21 properties whereas if you bought them out it would only be four, et cetera. Since all of the lands in Bryn Coed have to be put under the same conservation easement no matter who owns them, and that property is not actually usable to the township. Once you take out the 60 acres that other than the paths going through, we're really, around, they're slated for around the edge. It's not, the rest of it isn't usable for anything. You're left with like 10 or 12 acres that you could put a ball field on, something like that, maybe get two ball fields in. But that parcel is also required to be the parking lot and a trailhead for the area. It's required to have the public restrooms for the area. Um, By who? It's part of the plan for the National Lands Trust, the whole overall Bryn Coet. The public restrooms are there, and the one of the larger parking lots is there as a... Well, they don't dictate that if we buy it. They can't dictate the restrooms or any of that. Correct, but that was the township's plan to have them. Correct. And to have them on that parcel. Correct. So if you have a landowner, a private individual, who's willing to undertake all of that and pay for all of that, why not buy a different parcel that's actually usable by the township? Because now you've conserved double land. Everybody's required to meet the same conservation easement for any property they buy out of Bryn Coed. Now you've eliminated the construction costs. You've eliminated the guesswork in where the rest of your open space fund is going, which makes you available to do something about the culvert property if funds allow for that. You've eliminated the cost of installing a restroom or a parking lot and the ongoing cost of maintaining any of that. So, so my, my question is just, since the goal would be met and you would now be able to conserve double the property, is the board considering that? Can I ask Liz some questions? Can the board at least answer first? <laughs> I don't know where to begin. You're saying of the 72 acre parcel that only 10 acres or so would be usable. I find that way off base. First off, as you come up the driveway, parking would be readily available on that gentle slope on the way up on the right and left. And as you go further up, you have that, that um, flat, area. flat area that's carved out. You have, you could put certainly more than two ball fields there and you could always work some soil going up on the right. More importantly, you're surrounded by 450 to 500 acres that's going to be the Natural Land Trust Preserve. Right. That any any part of our, we're not going to put up a fence and say that you can't go beyond that. Just the opposite. We're going to hopefully encourage usage and going around. And, and I'm missing part of my arguments, but also the money that we're doing this with is called open space revenue money. It comes with tax. We're not doing it to preserve buildings, and, and we're, what we're doing is to preserve open space with the taxpayers' money. That's what it was taken out of their pockets. Right. That same acreage is available in all usable acreage, as opposed to the steeply sloped and wet. But acreage. on the 72 acres, those buildings are going to remain. That's not open space, is it? If you sell it to the individual? Yes. The buildings would remain. The rest of it would still be so part of the open space. So that would not be open space, correct? 
Correct, the Cow Palace would stay, but that also goes to the stewardship of the land up here. That Cow Palace has a history to it, and it would be rejuvenated, give you some taxes for your I, I, budget I, shortfalls. Yeah, there were some interesting up. qualities to the thing, but I still got down to it. When I first walked that property over two years ago with this idea, was what was this going to be, this quaint little park? We could put up a volleyball net, we could put in a, um, a gazebo and have restrooms, and we could use that until 50, 100 years from now, the township grows and it could use something else. It's perfect for that. Where the cornfield across the street, to use and to connect to the land trust, you'd have to walk across Long Springs. I didn't find that attractive. Also, you had other um, grading issues. I found the original 72 acres just almost perfect for, for the township to use. That, that's the primary reason that I, and we considered it, we truly considered it a lot. Did I miss anything? No, I think the access to the trail system is one of the key points. Except the access to the trail system is still there with the private landowner owning it. All of the things that you're talking about are still there. The only difference is whether the cow palace remains Stays and is repurposed or it comes down and becomes a field. Wait, there's two. Oh, anyway, so the private owner and the uh, bathrooms and parking would never be able to be closed by a private owner? No. They'd be responsible for it in perpetuity. For installing it, for maintaining it, for cleaning it, for and supplying for, it. For public use. For public use. And we would... Yes. And we'd have a commercial operation in the middle of the park area? It's a farm. Yeah. It's a farm in the middle yes. of the farm. Yeah. Agriculture, yes. I, yeah, I, I've heard that argument that hydroponics is still a farming, but it's a commercial operation in the middle of the park. Right, low volume commercial at this point. <laughs> Until, it, it's not the at this point thing. If you, well, you don't know like that. urban farms, there's your example that involves no one from this township. H-E-R-B-A-N, urban farms, if you go online, you can see a video of what aquaponics looks like. The entire Cal Palace, when fully set for full capacity, takes about 10 employees to run the farm. Kale doesn't need a lot of oversight. Nor just marijuana, but it's just, um, it's, all right, so one of the issues when we walked it with the open space was that there was asbestos in the grouting of the concrete block walls. So there's some hazards there. Is this what you want in your kale farm? I mean, it's just, it's it just. It would be our responsibility to rehab the whole thing. All that money comes off the township shoulders. I like John's passion about the vision of this park. It is a place where already the driveway access, sight lines are, are good for access there. Being in on the south side I'm have of St. Matthew's Road. You Road. just made her agree with me for the first time ever. <laughs> no, I was right. assuming a butt was coming, so I was moving her out there. <laughs> Thanks, John. Might have been twice before. I, I can't speak for the others, but I, Susanna. Are, are you a, a township resident that is? And council for a township resident. Um, could you t tell us who you are? I'm sorry, at this point I thought I <laughs> was a familiar face here. I am Elizabeth Gavin. And you represent? And you represent? The Deweys. What happens, may I ask a question? What happens if um, 30 years from now they're out of this? And, and this property turns to a commercial industry other than aquaponics because it could do that. There was an offer that if the Deweys ever sold the property, the first right of refusal would go back to the township. But that doesn't, what if the township's not the ability to purchase at that point in time? That's true of all lands that you're trying to Exactly, yeah. Since growing marijuana is not federally legal, at this point. At this, this point, point. I, who knows in 50 years what marijuana is going to be, but it's in the middle of a park. I would think, I'm not your solicitor, I would think that an ordinance would be put in place that you can't grow marijuana in the middle of the park. 
I would think. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a park, though. It would because be it's private. 72 acres that somebody else owns. A commercial operation. It would be a commercial no, operation. In, in, so in, it's, in, it's, in fairness to her, when we discussed some of these things, they were willing to sign a covenant running with the land in perpetuity that there'd never be any marijuana use. So marijuana okay. is off the off table. table. Thank it you. It's never on the table. Well, but it could be any other commercial use. Could be any so, use. Has well, the from NLT limit it to agriculture. So, is Mr. so yes, you could grow basil instead of kale, but it's only agriculture. Can we support what the supervisor Wait, can it be uh, a milking facility for cows? Well, that's agriculture. Right? I mean, it could be a lot of different I, I things suppose. is what I'm saying. But I mean, you can't put in a car manufacturing plant. No. I mean, you can only do what all the surrounding properties right. are doing. Yes. So originally when we heard about this, we heard Mr. Doy was offering to, to purchase 10 acres. Is this now saying he would buy the whole 72 acres and he would be paying enough that we could buy 150 acres someplace else? I didn't understand with that conserving it twice business you were saying. The offer was to buy the entire parcel, which then means the township can take its money and buy other parcels. And we, that are and we wouldn't have to spend money on demo. Mm -hmm. However, well, part part of the grant money would be reduced. So right. Mm -hmm. So well, we end up spending the same amount mm -hmm. on most. Yes. But the end result being that you have a private landowner conserving 72 acres. The township still conserves its 70 acres or so. Now you've got 140 acres. But to be fair, you have not you have private no, no, conserving no the other extra. 72 acres too. You're not preserving that original 72 acres as open space. It's not. It's not currently open space, and you're saying you're going to preserve it and calling it open space. It is not. I, I guess you and I are not having the same understanding of open space. The easement requires that the property be open to everybody, to the trails, yeah, everything. Are there dwellings on it? Are there buildings on it? Yes. And you're going to keep those buildings. Right. That's why I said you've got about 60 acres that are remaining open, and then the 10 or 12 that end up leaving, but staying exactly when, as they've been when, for the last 50 years. But when we own it and those buildings aren't there, is that going to be open space? Yes. So what I'm saying is for the cost of 12 acres of open space, you could have 70 acres of open space. No, either way, we get 72. And the thing is, you know, you buy the Privately, somebody buys the 72 acres with the buildings on there. So 60 acres are open space, and then there's a building on there. And if we take our money that we were going to use to buy that and move it over across the street, across St. Matthews, and buy those lots, then that's open space. Now, if we could stay with the 72 acres, the cow palace, and take it down, we have 72 acres of open space, and whoever buys the properties over here, is there open space again? Is they going for one yeah, so there's no addition sure, of sure. open space. No, there's no addition because somebody else will buy those other properties. Now, what it does do is if we were to choose to buy the properties across the street, then it makes NLT whole pretty much. They're pretty much done with conserving the property. These other lots would then be sold. There are a bunch of lots still. Right. I don't know. Jane, you had a comment? Um, I just have another perspective. I mean, this property was used for an agricultural use for decades, maybe a century, you know, as a, the cow palace, having it still being used for agricultural use, I mean, that sounds fine to me. That doesn't sound like we're tearing up West Vincent. That sounds like we're just keeping an agricultural use. Something you should consider. There's a difference, though, in my mind, open space and preserving cow palaces for commercial operation. But that's not what's that, that's down, the, down my thought process. If you walk that property, and I'd be glad to walk with you, the 72 acres in the center, if that would become a very small rural park with a bicycle rack, gazebo, and restrooms to be used, and tied into 450 to 500 acres surrounding it, adjoining to it, you don't have to cross the street, you just walk through the woods. Well, what I'm but saying we offered though, that, is, is and that, at our yeah. cost. If you, you allowed, if they allowed that access, 
then you have open space money where you can spend somewhere else because our open space There's money 10 acres in the center out. where those cow, cow houses are are not going to be usable to us. And that is the prime ground for any future potential ball fields or anything like that. Well, don't we have any other property that could be potential ball fields? Across the street from the cow house. So well, why not take the best one that we decided four years ago to go after? Well, because I think you've got a good offer on the table, and maybe you really need to think about it. Well, we have. Okay. We've thought about it for it's, months. It's been around for a couple of months. Okay. okay. There's just been really no public discussion on the matter. John, that's because that's it's true. real estate, one of the right. Agreed, but there's been well, no public discussion. I know about that cow palace. I think it was up there about 10 years ago. But So your plan is to, to tear that down. That's correct. How much is that going to cost? A lot. Is it six hundred thousand dollars approximately? Is that going to come out of tax money or? No, no we're getting a nine hundred thousand dollar grant. Be used for that. From. From DCNR. Okay. Yeah, six hundred thousand. Environmental issues you don't know. We haven't had that checked yet. That's included in the. We demolition. assume there's going to be some minor ones, but we've done it uh, phase one. No, phase. we did not do a phase one. Um, that will be part of, if we ever get to that point and they actually sign the agreement, we will conduct a phase. So it's not going to be tax money. I mean, indirectly, I guess. Somebody, it's not, called open space fund, yes. Yeah. Not West Vincent tax money. It is West Vincent. Yeah. That's where the open space money comes. Three or quarter percent of your EIT taxes goes to open space. The and it's fine. You can only, we can only use it for open space. So that can be used to tear the buildings down? Yes. The current needs and desires you've talked about for the property, though, the gazebo by the pond, the bike rack, they're all things that we've suggested and are willing to, again, put in at our expense. So it still comes down to the 10 acres in the middle that makes the cow palace, so it's still a $1.6 million ball field versus having all of that. And yes, the cow palace remains, but it's been here. It's been finished for 50 years. It's been in progress for longer than that. It was a dairy farm even before the Cow Palace went up. You could take that 1.6 or 1.2 or however much it costs across the street, and now you have the park that you want with your gazebo and your, we actually suggested, we'll put in picnic tables. We'll put in a water fountain and a trough for the horses and the dogs. And I am not horse people, but I know you don't want people like me driving their car next to people unloading their horse. So you put in a separate area for people coming in with their trailers. It, it seems like you're looking at, looking at it as they cannot coexist. They can they, what? That the public use of the parking lot and the bathrooms and the trailhead access cannot coexist with the buildings that exist there now. And we're suggesting that it can. I think you're, you're saying, yes, we could have restrooms, let's say, to the right of Cow Palace number four. We could have parking to the left of Cow Palace, the big one, Cow Palace number one. No, now, that's now, not what we're saying at all. But you are, because those buildings are going to be there. What if we wanted to put, in 50 years, I mean, if those cow palaces are not there, we have a building with restrooms, and we do whatever we think is right now for it, which it might be very low key, you're connected right immediately to those trails and you don't have to cross flowing springs to it. I know Same you keep Matthews. saying, or St. Matthews, I know you keep saying, well, you're going to give us access. Yeah, but you're taking the tent. We're taking once, the heart out of it. Once, once that is taken out of that center of that, it's not the same piece of ground. It just isn't. Right, you might tell me it's but I'm not purchasing it. That's what I'm saying. I agree, but it's no longer that you're purchasing it and you're purchasing something with a donut hole out of it. It's that you are getting the bonus use of all of this land in the way that you imagine except for a ball field. And to be frank, there's probably enough room between the ball field and the proposed museum to have, or between the cow palace and the proposed museum to put in your volleyball court. It's the kind well, of there's, there's actually a place across the street that you could put a ball. Right. In. So what I'm saying is you're you're either spending 1.6 million dollars now that you are fairly certain is going to cost more when you actually get into the thick of it to in 50 years be able to put in a ball field, or you spend the 1.6 across the street for 70 acres that's all usable as ball fields, 
and in 50 years, you can put in a ball field there. Well, you, and you're assuming there's no cost to that leveling that ground, which is incorrect. I, anyway. I, I'm, I'm to... suggesting that the cost is less than removing the 36 it, inches. It of certainly time. would be, substantially. I've, I've listened to this. I, I'm, I struggle with this for the number of reasons, um, and I keep coming back to the same conclusion. So I'll leave the rest up. You try to convince Mike and David. Did you have any more questions, Sarah, since I'm up here anyway? I really I think my question is for Joe, way back to the beginning about the lawsuits um, about the approval of the subdivisions. Does that stop any transactions on all of the Brinco Ed Farms property until those things are resolved? I have to defer that to the attorney for the National Lands Trust. Okay. He has approved subdivisions. Whether he chooses to operate uh, pending an appeal is up to them. Okay. Uh, yeah, Liz, you just threw in the museum at the end there. Do you want to let everybody else know what you're talking about? What Mr. Dewey he, this is, Mr. Dewey told the Historic Resource Committee a lot of stuff from back in July, so some of us are allowed to talk about it anyway. He brought it up to us. Can you tell us what the... There have been a lot of different things that we have thought about that might be beneficial to the community as a whole. And it did start as buying just the ring road and the milking parlors that were inside it, and then it morphed to, well, we could buy the whole thing, put the rest of it under easement like the township planned to do, and the township could get more land with the rest of the money. When you approach from St. Matthews, to the right <coughs> is a four-bay oversized garage with offices at the end. Mm -hmm. To the left is a terraced parking area. Mm -hmm. The parking would remain there for non-horse people at the garage at the end of it. I just really want you to tell me about the museum. Was he going to staff it and outfit it? And so no. just give me a chance, Sarah. Um, at the end of the garage was where we envisioned putting in the public restrooms because then you've got the parking, the bathrooms, and the access to both trailheads. Going off to the left-hand side, you put in a gazebo on the trail over to the rest of the trail overlooking the pond, which is only a stormwater basin that has been so neglected that now it's a pond. It needs to be remediated. Um, then the Cow Palace is in front of you. To the right, parallel to the Cow Palace, is another building. Mark thought that that would be a great place to have a museum for West Vincent. That again, they would pay for all the maintenance and upkeep of it. Is it the kind of thing that's open from 8 to 4 Monday to Friday? No. It's the kind of thing where you call and say, the HRC is having an event, we'd like to come into the museum. Great. Or the second grade is coming over to see about how you are aquaponically growing kale and tilapia. At the same time, you would open the museum, so some of the kids are looking at the farm, some of the kids are having lunch on the picnic table, some of the kids are looking in the museum, so it would be more on demand <coughs> as opposed to staff, but all at the expense of the dunes. Yeah, so the building you're talking about is the one that's got loading docks and maintenance area storage. It's the one that inside is by level. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I guess that would be a loading dock. Right, it's got a loading dock. So, um, you know, I guess if you were looking for a West Vincent Historic Museum, you might be looking at the old other side of this building or something, one of our old structures, not a former maintenance building. So I, it, it doesn't seem like there's money in the budget for that, and nobody has suggested it. This was just a way that one of the buildings okay. so could be reused appropriately. Mr. Dewey was the town. proposing to endow it to fix it up and to maintain it and to staff it. And Right, the suggestion is that all of these amenities are privately run for the benefit of the public. Could, could we refocus this? Yes. Yes. John and Mike, and I wish David was here tonight. Please stick to your original plans. Haven't we learned enough about the Deweys and what they say they're going to do and what they ultimately do? Aren't we six nights into a, a zoning hearing board meeting? I mean, come on. When, when does it end with this guy? Just stick to your original plans and say no. I understand your emotional, and, and I grant you that. 
I, for one, can't go that route. I have to stick to what I really believe in. I'm asking and, you to stick to what you believe in. That, I can't believe we're having this discussion in this forum right now. So I can't either. I just want to say I, I hope you are not letting this obstacle course thing have any influence on this because that is really unfair to a citizen. They have a right to go to the zoning hearing board, do what they're doing. I know people don't like it, but I don't think that you can like make people pariahs and treat them in a bad way because of something like that. I haven't heard any of that. Liz, uh, I just that's what we just heard. Well, I, we just I meant heard within it. the... Okay, I just hope you guys are on the right... Or right I have one <coughs> Would your client be interested in a lease? It would depend on whether you mean like a five year at least because the investment in the building is. Well, it can't be five, that's for sure. It'd have to be much longer than that. What Mike's getting at is if the, the property. We like the, we like the property, the 72 acres. If, 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 but if Mr. Dewey, if Mark ever passed away and his family didn't want to operate that building, and they were wealthy enough to say live in France. I'm just making this up. But the property would then fall into disarray and, and poten yeah. potentially fall back on the township to demo that same building. Stand. That's what I believe he was talking well, about. Well, it's actually more than that. We're, we stay in control. So those are two different seven, questions. Seven. Our proposal was that if the Deweys decide they're done and they move to France, we would demo the buildings and return the state, the area to grass. So we're taking on the expense now, or we're taking on the expense in 50 years. Either way, the township is not paying for it. Oh, uh, I, and that's I, how- I, that's, I did not hear this. So you're saying that if the business fails, or they decide they're out of it, you will return it back to ground? So the proposal was that, assuming you give us the permit to use it as a farm, right. to start with, we will affix up the outside so that it's aesthetically pleasing. There are no fences. Whoever talked about the fence? We're, we don't pro propose any fences. Nothing is closed off to anyone because everything is contained inside the buildings. Correct. The roof would be replaced with solar panels to make it a carbon negative footprint to be more environmentally friendly. If, if, if people are done eating kale, they reserve the right to grow something else in there. But if it becomes an issue of we're done and we're abandoning the property, we would raise the cow palace and return the area to grass at our expense before transferring that property to another entity. And we would give you and NLT, you'd have to fight it out amongst yourselves, first right of refusal to buy the parcel. Well, but it would have a better than that a lease. So it would, have, it would depend on what your terms are. Well, what would you be looking for? I, I would have to ask them because they're going to do the aquaponics. They can either take their business to Lancaster, or they can do it here where the money comes back into the community. Right. I have a mortgage on my house. It's a promise that I'm going to pay that mortgage every month, okay, for 30 years. What if I don't? I have already promised. That's what you're saying. You promise you're going to do But that's not my problem. I, I'm just finding fault with your argument. Until it actually happens, there's no guarantee that anybody's going to demo those buildings in the no, future. But if it's a lease, we own the property and we have so reserved money for the demo. That's what he's getting at. That the rent will not cover. No, 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 no. Rent may not cover it, but um, the savings is what we'd have to spend for demolition would always be there for demoing in, in case it failed. Yeah. Abandoned, whatever. That's all. I mean, that's the way I'm thinking. I can ask. It's just an option. Before you get your votes up, let's have a majority of the board to pursue that. Because um, I'm not sure Dave was in favor of that option. <laughs> so what? How do we do that? I don't want to enter into lease negotiations unless the majority of the board. No, sure. I don't want to speak for David. I'm not speaking for David. Um, but I guess it's an option we can discuss. You Real say anything you want. No, I mean, in the executive session. You have to have yeah, executive session. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me if I come across a little strong. I've, I've thought about this. I've thought about I've come complete circle. When we first walked the, the field across, 
I would. I came home that night and told my wife, I think I, I think I could do this. And then I just kept gnawing at me, and I haven't heard anything that's taken me off of my position. The original 72 acres. That's from my heart. And nothing against Mark and his wife. Doesn't even enter. Okay, any other non-agenda items? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote real quick. Can we have a, an end so to this meeting? Hmm? How do you put that 930? Um, I moved. I moved to the third. Second. All those in favor, aye.